Hello, welcome to CADEX TV. My name is Frank Fortunato. Today is Friday, August 2nd, 2013. The State Department is announcing this morning that the United States government is shutting its embassies and consulates throughout the Muslim world this coming Sunday. In the Islamic world, Sunday is a work day. The State Department said this morning that they were taking the action out of an abundance of caution. Apparently, uh, they have received a non-specified threat that there is going to be some action at an American consulate or embassy somewhere in the Muslim world. All other embassies are functioning normally. The State Department, as you may remember, issued a major warning last year corresponding with the uh, September 11th anniversary uh, to American diplomatic facilities in the Muslim world. Of course, it was... Uh, uh, a bit of a problem at the consulate in Benghazi where the uh, American ambassador to Libya was killed. More information is coming about the Spain crash and uh, the, the train crash in Spain. The engineer of that train uh, has admitted that he was traveling at twice the speed limit before it hit the curve and crashed. In courtroom video released yesterday, the engineer Francisco Jose Garzon told the judge he was at a loss to explain why he did not slow down before the July 24th crash. He said, I can't explain it. I still don't understand how I didn't see it mentally or whatever. I just don't know. He said the journey was, quote, going fine until the curve came upon him. When the danger became clear, he said, oh, my God, the curve, the curve, I won't make it. The 52-year-old uh, engineer is a longtime employee of the uh, train line. The train had been going as fast as 119 miles per hour shortly before the derailment. Uh, seconds before the crash, the driver slowed it down to 95 miles per hour, which was still way above the speed limit for the turn, which was 50 miles per hour. The judge asked whether or not he had used the brakes. Uh, Garzon replied, yes, the electric one, the pneumatic one, all of them. Listen, it was already inevitable. The uh, judge provisionally charged Mr. Garzon uh, with multiple counts of negligent homicide. Solvency 2 is the uh, big scheme to uh, better regulate uh, uh, using dynamic capital measurements, the banking and insurance and reinsurance industry. It was supposed to have been implemented in Europe about three years ago. Now Standard & Poor's is saying that uh, even having it implemented in 2016 is still, quote, far from certain. Um, you can uh, read about this if you want to Google it, but essentially Standard & Poor's is saying that the imposition of the dynamic capital takes too much account for short-term investments that insurers and reinsurers might have, which on itself disqualifies the uh, measurement to be able to accurately track long-term health. Short-term investments are prone to fluctuations up and fluctuations down. More and more reinsurers have been trying to game and profit the system because of low interest rates by taking short-term investments and thus are not able to benefit from longer held investments which see the investment return even out over long periods of time. Wouldn't this be interesting if this never gets implemented? A series of major storms have hit the U.S. territory in Puerto Rico over the past few weeks, destroying hundreds of homes. Uh, incredibly enough, uh, Nine and a half inches of rain fell on July 18th. It's almost doubled the average rainfall for the whole month. The ground of Puerto Rico now is completely saturated. Puerto Rico is usually in the eye of most hurricanes. If there is a hurricane that crosses across the island, it is going to cause some heavy flooding because there's no place for the water to go. Taiwan has been having some difficulties in trying to restart a uh, nuclear power plant that uh, began in 1997. The country already has three of them. It uh, has a dense population of some 23 million people and they always need electric power. The fourth power plant that was begun in 1997 has been held up for years. There's a big schism amongst the population as to whether nuclear power is safe or not safe. And of course, the events at the Fukushima plant in Japan after the earthquake didn't help. Yesterday, during a referendum vote in the Taiwanese Congress, a fight broke out. The Associated Press TV shows physical confrontations during the uh, legislative session. Eight people pushing and shoving in one fight. Two people scuffled in another area of the floor while others tried to separate them. People up in the balconies began to chant and wave signs and threw water bottles and splashed water onto the lawmakers below. It was uh, quite a scene with punching and water and etc. etc. A couple of lawmakers wrestling on the ground. Well, here's an interesting story. U.S. scientists have found that even small changes in temperature or rainfall 
now correlate with a rise in assaults, rapes, and murders, as well as group conflicts and war. Yes, this is global warming indeed. They're saying, uh, this is a study from the University of California, Berkeley. He said uh, there is a relationship between projected levels of climate change and increasing violence in the world. Um, he, uh, the, the researchers looked at 60 studies from around the world with data spanning hundreds of years. That includes uh, increases in domestic violence in India during recent droughts and a, spite, a spike in assaults, rapes and murders during heat waves in the United States. The report also suggests rising temperatures correlated with larger conflicts, including ethnic clashes in Europe and civil wars in Africa. Uh, one of the main mechanisms that seem to be at play here is changes in economic conditions. The researcher says, we know the climate affects economic conditions around the world, particularly agrarian parts of the world. He said there could be a physiological basis because some studies suggest that heat causes people to be prone to aggression. They estimate that a 3.6 degree Fahrenheit increase in global temperature could see personal crimes increase by about 15 percent and group conflicts rise by more than 50 percent in some regions. I would suggest that if you ask any uh, member of a large urban police force whether or not crime spikes in the middle of the hot summer, they will look at you as if you are crazy. They will say, of course it does. Very interesting. That's the news for today. Have a very good weekend. We'll see you on Monday.